Okay, so let's go ahead and talk through this problem. Remember, you should try it on your own first. Um, and then once you have the answer, go ahead and we'll talk through it now. So how much energy is released from 50.0 grams of steam is cooled from 109 degrees Celsius to 10 with a decimal point degrees Celsius? So the first thing you want to do is think about what happens to steam or to water between those temperature ranges. Well, hopefully you think to yourself, well, I know at 100 degrees Celsius, we have a phase change and we're going from steam to water. So we start at 109 degrees Celsius, we're gonna cool it down until we get to the phase change. When we are cooling or having a change in temperature, we're gonna use it Q equals M times C delta T equation. At the phase change, the temperature isn't occurring because all of the energy is going into changing those intermolecular forces and the distance between those molecules. So we're gonna use a Q is equal to moles times delta H in this case of vaporization because we have that um, boiling and condensing phase change at 100 degrees Celsius. And then from there, once we get to liquid water, we're gonna cool it down to 10 degrees Celsius. Again, we have a phase change. So we're gonna use that Q equals M times C times delta T. So for part one, we are cooling our steam down, so we're gonna use that Q equals MCAT equation. Make sure, really important, that you're using the specific heat of steam. Do not use the specific heat of water because that will give you the wrong value. Because um, in this case, we have gaseous water. Um, one thing to keep in mind with the temperature change, it is final minus initial. So since we're cooling things down, that ends up with a negative nine for the temperature change. That's okay. Overall, we have a negative Q because we are losing energy is exiting our system. So that is negative 918.9 joules, or if we go ahead and convert that into kilojoules, negative 0.9189. The next step, we are having that phase change occurring. So we have to use that secondary equation. So we need to know the number of moles we find the number of moles by going ahead and converting using molar mass. So 50 grams divided by 18.01 gives us 2.78 moles of water. So we plug that into our equation. Make sure you use the delta H of vaporization. It's going to be the bigger of the two numbers in your notes. So that gives you 40.6 kilojoules. Multiply those two things together. gives us 112.868 kilojoules. And again, we're going to wait to the very end to round our answers together or to round the sig figs when we add them all up. Again, we're going to cool. So we're going to have a change in temperature. It's going to be delta T. So our mass doesn't change. Our specific heat does because now we have liquid water. So it's that 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And then again, final minus initial. So that's going to be negative 90. When we multiply those all together, we get negative 18,828 or negative 18.828 kilojoules. So the final thing that we need to do now is go ahead and add up those three values. So Q total is equal to the first one plus the second one plus the third value. So part one, we have negative 0.8. 9189 kilojoules. Again, remember, you need to have the same unit for each of your pieces and parts. For part two, we have 112.868. But let's pause and think about this. We are cooling our sample down. It is losing energy. So even though this is the positive value here, we need to think about what's happening to the energy because exiting, that's actually going to be a negative 112.868. So one thing to look out for with these types of problems, if you have negative for the beginning and ending part, you're going to have negative in the middle too. If it's positive because you're heating things up for the first and second part or first and last parts, then you're going to have positive in the middle. So it's either going to be all positive or all negative. So just keep that in the back of your mind. And then finally, we're going to add that negative 18.828 kilojoules. So now we pull out our best friend, the calculator. So we add that all up. Negative 0.9189 plus a negative 112.868 plus a negative 
0.828. So we go ahead and plug that in. Our overall Q is equal to a negative 132.6. But if we think about sig figs, okay, go back to our very beginning. We have three sig figs here from the mass, three sig figs from this temperature, but only two sig figs from this temperature. So we go ahead and round this value. We would round it to negative 130 kilojoules. Okay, so that is our final answer for that question. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions over calculations involving heating curves, please let me know. Otherwise, have a great day, everyone, and I will see you later. Bye.